Hi, uh, we will be uh, discussing IP addressing in this lecture. Uh, we will be discussing various uh, classes of IP addresses, class A, class B, class C. We will see uh, what is the role of a default gateway uh, and a subnet mask, how subnet mask defines the network and the host portions. So, we will just uh, have a small brief introduction of IP addressing. So, basically what is an IP address? Uh, it is basically, uh, it is a 32-bit internet identifier including information about how to reach a network location uh, via internet routing system. So basically it's a, it's a it's an address which is used on the internet and it consists of uh, uh, 32 bits. So uh, the example here uh, is the IP version 4 IP address which is 172 like for example dot 16 dot 254 dot 1. So it consists of 4 octets. Each octet consists of 8 bits and we have 4 such octets. So total we have uh, 32 bits uh, for this IP address and it constitutes about 2 raised to the power 32 uh, addresses which is a big number but since this uh, uh, this figure is uh, exhausting uh, very fast so we have a new version of IP address IP addressing which is called IP version 6 IPv6 and it has the 128 bit IP address but still uh, that IP addressing system is not much in uh, place uh, on the internet so far and uh, still it's a, it's uh, it's evolving so basically an ip address has two parts one of one part is the network address and one part is the host address so uh, any of the octets uh, can represent the network part and the rest of the octets can re represent the host address for example in this particular case uh, 192.168.55 is the network address and the host address is 22. Uh, what's the meaning of a network address and the host address? We'll be looking in the subsequent uh, slides. But basically, you know, what that what means is the network ID. Network means that uh, uh, a specific network with a specific identifier, and the host means you know how many hosts we can have in that particular network. Uh, so in the figure on the right here, we see the uh, 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 configuration for the IP address and there are two ways that we can have the IP address configured one is the we can have the auto uh, uh, IP address configured automatically from the DXCP server uh, in usually uh, in the organizations we have one server which is called DXCP server and that is responsible for assigning each computer a different IP address there is another way which is called uh, the static IP addressing we can mention the IP address by ourselves so mostly in the PLC environment in the industries uh, usually we assign the IP addresses to the devices by ourselves uh, so for example we assign the IP address and then there is a subnet mask and the default gateway what are these basically the subnet mask actually uh, defines what part of the IP address is a network address so if you have you see here so where we have 255 means all ones all ones all ones so basically you know the first three octets would be 192.168.0 would be the network address so this last part the last octets oct specifies the host address and together the network address and the host address constitutes the ip address Okay, so what is the subnet mask? Uh, as in the previous slide, we discussed that the subnet mask is actually uh, responsible for defining the network part of the IP address. So basically what happens actually inside the computer or inside the device, uh, the subnet mask is ended with the actual IP address or when the device wants to talk to any other device, uh, it will end the IP address of the destination IP with the subnet mask which is defined in the computer right and this is how it goes so for example the ip the ip address is ended with the subnet mask the ending operation is performed and this is the result so these bits if translated to decimal becomes 192.100.10 so basically you can see that we know that this part is the network address portion so basically the subnet mask specify specifies the network part of the IP address. So the network address for this IP address is 192.100.10.0, right? So this is 
uh, this is how we get the network address okay so now we have the uh, IP address classes basically there are uh, three classes of the IP addresses class A class B and class C how they are ident identified they are identified by the first octet the value of the first octet so if you see uh, here in class a uh, if the value of the first octet is the decimal value is between 1 to 127 this is class a if the value is between if the value is between 128 to 191 for the first octet this is this would be class b ip address and if the value is between 192 to 223 for the first octet that will be uh, class c ip address uh, why do we use these classes uh, basically it depends on the size of a network uh, usually class a uh, ip addresses uh, class a networks are those which have uh, lots of hosts b class b networks are medium sized networks and class c are small size networks so uh, in class a uh, we have uh, the the default for the class a is that the first octet represents the network identifier and rest 24 bits represent uh, the host so uh, the network identifier it means if the network id bits are 8 means we can have 2 to 2 raised to the power 8 networks and we can have 2 raised to the power 24 uh, hosts possible so uh, we have very few networks but we can have large number of hosts so any company or any organization which has large number of hosts usually goes for class a ip address the medium size companies uh, usually use a class B IP addressing scheme. Uh, they have uh, two octet specifies for the network identifier and two octet specify, uh, specifying the host identifier. Uh, and class C is used for small networks where we have many, many networks possible. So 24 bits are used for the networks. We can have many, many networks possible, for, but for every network, we can have maximum 254 hosts, which is basically uh, 2 raised to power uh, 8 and minus one or uh, why why minus one we will see it in the you know later lectures because some of the ip addresses are reserved for some specific purposes so for class a the first octet is the network id class b the two first two uh, uh octets are the network id and for class c the three uh i the three octets are the network id this is basically the default configuration for class a b and c but that doesn't mean that uh, we always would have in class A the first octet as a network ID. If we specify the subnet mask instead of uh, 255.0.0.0, uh, we, we can change the subnet mask and you know we can make uh, the, the network part maybe consisting of three octets for class A. But still that would be class A as long as the first uh, octet decimal value is between 1 to 127, right? So uh, this net network specifiers uh, you know the first octet for class a the first two for class b and first three for class c is the default uh, option uh, but we can always change that depending upon our need okay so we will see here now so default subnet mask for class a b and c so for class a we know that the de for the def the default network portion is the first octet for class a so the default subnet mask would be 255.0.0.0 and for class B, the subnet mask would be 255.255.0.0 and for class C, it would be 255.255.255.0. So this is the default uh, subnet mask, but would, would it mean that uh, the default, we will always have like, you know, these subnet masks for class A, B and C sp specific? No, we can change them as we want. So subnet mask can be different than the default value according to the numbers of hosts needed on the network so basically we can change the, sub, the default subnet mask to our desired value based on the number of hosts that we want on the network so for class a uh, ip address is the following subnet mask possible so like 10 dot if we have an ip address 10 dot 100 dot 52 dot 110 basically this is class a ip address why because this this 10 represents that this lies in the range of 1 to 127 this is class a but are we using the default class a subnet mask no we are not using the default subnet mask rather we are using a different uh, subnet mask so basically in this particular uh, ip addressing scheme we will be having like 254 hosts the last octet now represents 
the host ID. So even though the, the IP address is class A IP address, but the number of hosts we will have on this network will be maximum 254. Yes, so answer is yes, it means class A IP address with only 254 hosts. Okay. Okay, now we will see the public and private IP addresses. Uh, so what are public IP addresses and what are pri private IP addresses? Public IP addresses are used on the internet specifically. Private IP addresses are internal uh, and they are not routed on the internet and no traffic cannot be sent to them from the internet. They only are supposed to work within the local network. So in the companies, usually uh, we have the private IP addresses working. And whenever uh, we want to go outside uh, the network and want to communicate over the internet, always there will be a device which is which might be a gateway or a, it's a router which will translate between the local IP addresses or private IP addresses and the public IP addresses which are used over the internet. So one thing is for sure public IP addresses are used on the internet, private IP addresses are used inside the companies and there are some reservations for the private IP addresses and we will see all of them now. R R okay. So now, the, this first table shows the pri private IP address range. So, for class A, B, and C, there are different IP address ranges reserved for class A, B, and C. So, for example, for class A, 10, all the addresses between 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 to 10.255.255.255 is reserved for class A. 172.16.0.0 to this, this value and 192.168.0.0 for class C. This range, these ranges are defined for class A, B, and C, uh, private IP addresses. So whenever you see an IP address like starting with 10 or 172.16 or 192.168, it means always that these are the private IP addresses. We only use these private IP addresses inside the company. So inside the company, you would always see the IP addresses in this particular range either it's a class A or a class B or class C, uh, is it actually uh, uh, would be a private IP address. Okay, public IP addresses, remember that these private IP addresses are not used over the internet. They are only used in the companies or internal to the network. Public IP address ranges are from 0 0.0.0.0 to 126.255.255.255 you know, and then for class A, B, C, D and E we have different ranges. You can just view on the table. Uh, now, in, for in, in this particular example, like in Windows, if uh, Chris laptop is connected with the internet, so basically a Chris laptop would be having the private IP address, which is assigned to this computer by the router. This is the router, which is like TELUS and it has the public IP addresses. Actually, it has a public IP address also and it has a private IP address also. So basically, this computer talks to the router with the, the private IP address and then this router would, with it's, it's kind of a gateway or a router, it will convert that IP address, uh, it will uh, route that information to the internet using the public IP address. So this has usually the public IP address also and a private IP address also, but the laptop which is connecting to this router has only the private IP address and on the internet all public IP addresses are used. There are some reserved IP addresses as you can see here in the table there are lots of reserved we will not go through all of them but like 127.0.0.1 is a loopback IP address usually if you want to test that whether TCP IP is working on your computer you just go on command prompt and just type uh, ping 127.0.0.1 and if the ping is successful, it means the TCP IP stack is working perfectly fine on your computer. Uh, so it, it specifies all the various different ranges, uh, you know, reserved for some specific purposes. And other than these reserved IP addresses, all the IP addresses can be used by the uh, internet service provider companies like TELUS, Shaw, uh, for uh, the assignment to their specific hosts or customers. Right. Okay. So now we will have uh, a small uh, question and answer session for IP addresses. Uh, okay, so this IP address uh, is belongs to which class and which uh, is it a private or a public? So 128.0.0.0. This IP address is what? This is class B public IP address. Okay, so 
naturally it's class C IP address and is it public or private this is naturally this is a public IP address why it's not private because it's not 192.168 if it had been 192.168 it would have been the private IP address okay this IP address 10.0 is a private IP address 172.16 guess what this is class B IP address and it's a private IP address and 192.168 naturally it's a class C IP address and it's a private IP address 127.0.0.1 is a reserved IP address for the loopback it's a loopback IP address naturally it's a reserved IP address and also the last IP address 255.255.255.255 is a broadcast IP address and also it's a reserved IP address right now we'll see the role of a default gateway uh, in this picture you can see the default gateway here uh, in the screen uh, so what does it specify uh, usually it's a router's address if we are using a router or a gateway device in our uh, in our network uh, basically the router is a device that will allow the packets which are not for destined for the same network they are for a separate network they will help routing those packets to the other networks so basically what happens is uh, now this particular computer has 192.168.0.143 IP address uh, and the subnet mask specifies that the, this what the 192.168.0 is the network portion and this the 143 is the host portion so now if this computer wants to try to talk to another network let's say for example 10 dot something dot something right so what will happen that that particular destination IP address will be ended with the subnet mask and this computer will come to know that the computer which I'm talk, the device which I, I'm going to talk does not belong to the same network as my own network. So where should I send the packet then if it doesn't belong to my network? So this computer will then forward the packet to the default gateway, which is the router's address. So this packet will be sent to the router and then the router will forward that packet to to the uh, to that particular IP address like 10 dot whatever dot whatever right so on the internet for example if we want to, to uh, access google.com for example Google has a specific IP address naturally if we are in a, uh, in our company's environment uh, having the the private IP address on uh, on our computers uh, when we try to uh, access google.com our request naturally will be sent to the router because the computer will know that this IP address does not belong to my own network it's it's an external IP address so it will be sent to the router now the router will automatically route the packet to the uh, to the public internet right so this is how basically default gateway works so if default gateway is not mentioned uh, remember uh, if when we are using the PLCs or uh, the any gateway devices in our industrial networks if the if the if various PLCs are talking to each other via uh, a carrier and we have the router in between remember that all the devices for example if we are using control wave micro or we are using uh, any other device we have to mention the default gateway address in such scenarios because if we don't mention the default gateway in the PLC the PLC would not have uh, any means uh, to know where should I send my packet to so that's very important to mention the default gateway or the router's IP address or the gateway's IP address inside the PLC and usually it's usually given inside the PLC so basically uh, destination uh, so uh, address is ended with the subnet mask and compared with the device own network address and if they are different packet is sent to the default gateway so that's how how it works basically uh, the whole process uh, I have explained it before uh, that uh, any destination IP address is ended with the subnet mask and if the uh, uh, if the answer is um, you know, by you know the the final answer after the ending is compared with the uh, with the network at ID of the of the computer itself if both the network IDs are same it means they belong the destination network the destination network is same as the host network so the packet will not be sent but otherwise if they are if they are not same the network IDs are different then naturally the packet will be sent to the to the router so in this example as you can see this router has the IP address 192.168.0.1 uh, 
so this computer for example wants to access google.com on the internet the moment you know it it wants to find out it gets the ip address it knows the ip address is something else like for example 8.8.8.8 that ip address will be ended with 255.255.255 and then it will be compared to this network id naturally they will not not be same when they are not same this computer knows that this the the destination network is not existent in my own network this is somewhere outside so it will send its packet to the default gateway it will send it to the router 192.168.0.1 this router has a private ip address as well as well it has a public ip address 145.12.14.6 is a public ip address it has two ip addresses so automatically it has using some protocol by which it will convert this ip address you know and it will repacket it and send it to the internet and that the the, the the packet will go to the google.com the reply will come back and then once the reply comes back again it will do some con protocol conversion here and send the reply back to this particular computer from where the request was generated so that's all for today uh, if you have any questions do let me know uh, thank you very much